Meditations is to help you experience real freedom. A freedom that comes from embracing God's acceptance and love. In this remaining part of Session 1, we'll look at how to walk in the freedom God has given you and take hold of His wonderful blessings. Firstly, daily walk and live under God's grace and favour. To walk in God's grace means living under the free, undeserved, unearned love and favour of God. How good is that? You became a child of God, not by your own effort, but by believing in and receiving the gift of God's grace. As Ephesians 2.8 says, You have been saved by God's grace through believing. You did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. Romans 5.2 tells us that We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Make a stand to continue to relate to God daily, receiving by faith His grace and favour. You do not have to feel good enough in order to get God's acceptance. Neither do you have to do the right thing, work for God or perform to get God's acceptance. You have been made a child of God, made right with Him and completely accepted by Him. In Romans 3.24, we read, God treats us much better than we deserve, and because of Christ Jesus, He freely accepts us and sets us free from our sins. In another session, we'll suggest what to do when you mess up. At this point, it is important to note that whether you get it right or totally make a mess of things, your status will not alter. As God's child, you are accepted and unconditionally loved. Therefore, enjoy His acceptance and don't try to earn what is already yours. Next, you take hold of God's blessings when you walk in the Spirit. The moment you became God's precious child, you received His Spirit. Ephesians 1.13 says, God put His special mark of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit. God has given you a gift of Himself, His own Spirit, to empower you and to set you free. The Bible says, however, that you cannot walk in the Spirit when you allow your human nature to lead you instead of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.5 says, Those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. It's as if there is a door between your soul and spirit. If you open the door, you choose to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your daily activities. Every day, the Holy Spirit wants you to choose to have your mind, will and emotions be guided by His goodness. Paul, a follower of Jesus, encourages you to be filled with the Spirit. The exact meaning of this Bible verse is to be continually being filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't have to please God to get His acceptance. We seek to please Him by doing what He says because we are accepted. Acts 5.32 says, We are here to tell you about all this, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to everyone who obeys God. According to 2 Corinthians 3.18, as we obey and allow the Holy Spirit to work and change us within, we become more and more like Jesus. Listen to what it says. As the Spirit of the Lord works in us, we become more and more like Him. As you allow the Holy Spirit, He changes you on the inside. Ephesians 1, 18-19 says, How rich are the wonderful blessings He promises His people, and how very great is His power at work in us who believe. It goes on to say, this power working in us is the same as the mighty strength 
which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. Amazing, isn't it, that every child of God is empowered by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, empowered to become more like Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 tells us that we are to walk by faith. To walk in God's grace and spirit requires faith. We became a child of God by faith. Now we are to live by faith. Romans 1.17 says, The good news shows how God makes people right with himself, that it begins and ends with faith. As the scripture says, But those who are right with God will live by trusting in him. Mankind was created to depend on and be in fellowship with God. A parent wants their young child to depend on them for their protection and good. Our all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise, ever-present, sovereign Heavenly Father wants us, His children, to depend on Him through relationship for our security and well-being. For many, life can become a game of control. We play the game in an effort to find identity and security. Most seek their identity and security in their job, money, possessions, sport, people or activities, including church work. But real freedom comes when you find your security in God's love and acceptance, and you make Him Lord of your life. It takes faith to make Jesus the Lord of your life. When you make Jesus your Lord, you are choosing to have Him as number one in your life. To make Jesus Lord of your life means you want His desires to become your desires. Let me explain. Listen to God's promise to you. I know what I am planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you a hope and a good future. God loves you very much and sees the plans He has for your life from the beginning to the end. Our relationship with God is a father-child relationship. Your relationship with God as His child is far superior to your human father-child relationship because God's love is perfect. You may be asking, how do I know what God has planned for me? That's a good question. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord. That is, enjoy and take pleasure in the Lord God, and He will give you the desires of your heart. In the context of a relationship of love and trust, we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in our daily activities, and then His desires, which He has planned for us, become our desires. Our heart attitude will determine the choice we make every moment of the day. The choice will be whether in relationship we put our trust in God's love and draw upon the power of the Holy Spirit to allow His desires to become our desires. Or we put our trust in ourselves and draw upon our own resources. In the first part of the session, we said that we are all on a journey because life is like a journey. When you choose to draw upon your own resources, you are in the captain's seat on your spiritual journey. In order to receive all that God has for you and share life with Him, take your hands off the controls. Swap seats. You become the co-pilot instead and allow God to pilot you. To enjoy God's blessings and freedom He has given us, we have to walk in His love and acceptance. Ephesians 5, 1-2 says, You are God's children whom He loves, so try to be like Him. Live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us. Loving others comes out of a relationship where we know we are loved. As we have seen, we don't find God's love and acceptance by trying to please Him. We embrace God's love by faith. And as we relate to Him, 
our love for Him and others grows. We relate to God and share life with Him by staying connected. It is just like when you find someone you love and you SMS or talk with them as often as you can. Staying connected with God is a little like constant text messaging or telephoning. Even though you can't see the person, you remain in constant contact. You connect with God and develop your relationship with Him through prayer. We read in the Bible how the Apostle Paul connected with God. In Philippians 3.10, he declares, All I want is to know Christ, to experience the power of His resurrection and to share in His sufferings. Paul's passion was to be Jesus' friend. A friend is someone you love to spend time with. A friend is someone who is committed to another, sharing both good and difficult times together. Let's make Paul's passion to be Jesus' friend our passion too. Will you be Jesus' faithful friend? Will you trust God's ability to take care of you each day? Pray this prayer with me if you want to be Jesus' friend. Jesus, I want to be your faithful friend. Give me a love for the Bible so that I will find out what pleases you and do it. Father, thank you for the wonderful blessings you've promised your children. Teach me how to pray so that I will be able to receive all that you have for me. Holy Spirit, help me to rely on your great love and power every moment of the day. Amen. In the next session, you'll discover keys to help you develop your relationship with God. We'll seek to answer the questions, what is prayer and what makes it work? Music